Right, this is a really short little video just to show um, the final polish on the uh, reading table. So um, I'm gonna just put it on with a, with a rubber just because it puts a very smooth uh, final finish on and just gives a better end result. So I've got my wadding on the roll. So I'm gonna cut off a square. Only a small square because as you can see it's a very small amount of area to be polished and you tend to make different size rubbers on depending on the size of the area to be polished. I'm going to take off the outer gauze because that's not necessary and just like before try not to get any dust. Just like before you um, take the sheet I'm going to put gloves on again Really, I'm fed up having dirty hands. Um, I'm sure a lot of people don't use gloves, but after years of having dirty hands all the time, I just find it better. So here's the wadding. I'm going to make it into a little square. You can see it's not going to be very big. Let's make a, fold it over at the front and double fold it and then make a point and then just sort of round it off a bit and push it up underneath and then you fill it with whichever polish you're using in this case it's a button polish again because I'm trying to put a little bit of color onto the wood so button polish is great it's not great if you don't want it looking slightly orange but a lot of this old walnut was orange and if you're going to restore it how it was done originally this is how it looks I know the fashion isn't for an orange finish anymore but I'm afraid this is traditional and there's a place. So I put the sheet, it's an old sheet this is, I'll put it over and then you pull it to, over to the point and then just tuck it under and then twist it quite firmly and what you're doing is creating quite a firm pad. You can see that's quite firm. Um, but at the moment the bottom of it's very rounded which isn't going to release polish very easily so you just tap it a couple of times and that makes a flat bottom. Just blow off any dust. And then you just really, to apply the polish, it's very simple. You just go around like this. And you can see it's looking very shiny the second I go over it. The reason it's matte before is because I put the polish on with a polishing mop, which is a brush, as you would have seen in the previous video. And I've lightly sanded it and then I've wild it just to get a great finish. And I, I'm going to do the edges. I don't want the back of this to be particularly shiny because generally the backs of things aren't. So it looks a bit more authentic if you've got a shiny front and a dull back. And you see I'm just going across. I'm not wanting to put much polish on this piece at all. So I'm not going to build it up massively. I have been told by some people that this isn't French polishing, but it is, it's just, a light French polish. So because this is a new rubber, the wadding's already dried out. It's just soaked up into the wadding. So I'm gonna put a little bit more bust polish. And you, you learn how to do this with time. If you put too much straight away and then press too hard, you're gonna get a right mess. It's just gonna, but at, with time, you learn how hard to press and how much to put in and making a rubber becomes second nature. I mean, you can see that's, you twist it around and then put the last bit underneath and, and it's got quite a point on. So hopefully, you get, see that? This time I'm getting right into the moulding. Because you don't have to get every bit every time. But you can see that's really beginning to shine nicely. You probably go over this like this pretty 20 or 30 times minimum, depending on how shiny you want it to be. So I'll probably do it 20 times. Don't forget the edges. And then go over there. I 
I'm going to put still photographs on my Facebook page of this project. So you'll be able to see it from the, right from the start to the finish in stills and I'll explain what I've done. Um, I think it's nice to see a video, but I think also it's nice to see the whole thing from start to finish in one go. It sort of shows a bit more clearly the process, I think, if you show it on a sort of Facebook post. And it's kind of on. The grain's slightly empty, although I have grain thoughts. Um, I'm not going to get too obsessed about that. The end process after doing this, I'm probably going to wire wool it, and that will make the grains look slightly fuller because it takes the tops of the French polish off. Anyway, it was that simple really. You don't really want to watch me sort of do this for another 20 or 30 times, it'd be a bit boring. But So I'm just going to do it to achieve the right um, amount of shine and so the grain's fuller. Then I'm going to use my fine wild wool and wild wool and wax it and then I'll put it all back together. So um, that's how simple it is. And it was a particularly easy job because I brushed on the first three coats and then lightly sanded and wire walled it, which gave me a sort of head start. And it means you don't have to put a lot of um, French polish on with a rubber. Um, it's a little trick of the trade, which a lot of people don't like to tell you about. Okay, thank you.